people of the kingdom, loved and enlightened by God, we come together for worship. Welcome. Today is Transfiguration Sunday, and normally we focus on that one word in the Greek reading for the New Testament, which is uh, the basis of the word in English, metamorphosis. But today we are focusing more on light. Light. God enlightens us. There are references to light in the Old Testament, in the Epistle, and in the Gospel, which perhaps one wouldn't notice on Transfiguration Sunday so much. So we begin. I'm Pastor Kurt Lemko, representing Christ Lutheran Church in Rochester, and the words of light from John will let us move into this Transfiguration Sunday. John 1, beginning with verse 9. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave the power to become the children of God. The Old Testament lesson is from Exodus chapter 34, beginning at the 29th verse. This reading includes the brightness of the face of Moses after he receives the Ten Commandments from God. We read, beginning at verse 29. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, his face was radiant, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, so Aaron and all the leaders of the community came back to him, and he spoke to them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near him, and he gave them all the commands the Lord had given him on Mount Sinai. When Moses finished speaking to them, he put a veil over his face. But whenever he entered the Lord's presence to speak with him, he removed the veil until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, they saw that his face was radiant. Then Moses would put the veil back over his face until he went in to speak with the Lord. So far the reading from Exodus chapter 34. A New Testament lesson from 2 Corinthians is epistle for the day, beginning chapter 4. Verse 1. Therefore, since through God's mercy we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth plainly, we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we preach is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your servants for his sake. For God, who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. So far, the reading from 2 Corinthians. The Holy Gospel for the day is written in Mark chapter 9, 
Beginning at the second verse, this describes the experience of Jesus and the disciples at the actual transfiguration event. We read, After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there he appeared before them. And Elijah and Moses were also there talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud, This is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Here ends the Holy Gospel. We continue with our statement of faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we mentioned, metamorphosis comes from that Greek word for the title of our day, Transfiguration Sunday. But today we are really focusing on light. And the first place we see it actually is in the first words of the Bible. In the beginning, you probably remember this, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness covered the face of the deep. And God said, what? First thing, and God said, let there be light. This is the first thing that is important to be revealed to the world, light. And so there's a kind of a parallel between that and our coming to faith as well. Light is something that's not only appropriate, but necessary in a spiritual sense. Without light, you can't do much. I'd like to share with you a story that an older <coughs> pastor shared. He said it was all right to share with you, so I wouldn't want to step on his toes. But he was uh, assisting at a very large congregation, which meant that when other congregations in the area were without a pastor for a Sunday, he might go out and uh, help with the preaching. It so happened on one Sunday that there was a two-point parish. There were two little churches out in the country. So the first one was uh, pretty early in the morning. It was eight o'clock in the morning, and uh, he didn't know exactly where it was, so he got out there even earlier. And uh, when he got to that first little church, it was still dark. And uh, 
he thought, well, I don't know, I have to go to the bathroom. I gotta find out if there's a, a bathroom around here. So he went, the door was open. I guess they didn't lock up little churches in those days. And so he kind of fumbled around and he couldn't find a light switch, but uh, he found some stairs. So he thought, well, this probably goes to a bathroom downstairs someplace. So he kind of found his way downstairs and sure enough at the bottom of the stairs, there was a bathroom. So he went in the bathroom and uh, flipped the light switch and nothing happened. He was still in the dark. So he kind of said to himself, well, I've done this lots of times. I can probably handle it in the dark. So he did his business and then he got up and uh, was going to go upstairs again. And uh, he took a hold of the doorknob and it wouldn't turn. <laughs> Nothing happened. He was trapped dark in the basement of a church in the bathroom and he couldn't get out. So he was reduced to just staying there and waiting for someone to come and rescue him from the downstairs bathroom before he could help them out that morning. Well, he was in trouble because even though everything was in place and as soon as the man showed him how to get the light on and everything, it was fine. He could do what he had to do and get upstairs and everything worked. And it's kind of that way with the gospel. Nothing works until God comes and shows us how it works. It is unveiled to those who are really God's people and touched by his spirit. Otherwise, as it says in one of the readings, the God of this world has veiled the gospel. Sometimes we have the experience of the gospel really doing its work. I remember teaching a class when I was in campus ministry and about halfway through the class, I got a call from one of the college students and uh, he was just jumping up and down excited. He said, I get it, I get it. And he was telling me how he finally understood something about the grace of God, that we are forgiven, that we are accepted by God, not because of anything we have done, but just because he is such a good and loving God. I was thinking all that time, where's my tape recorder? I should get this down on tape. But that's the unveiled gospel, and sometimes we think, hey, I did that. But really, it's God at work, his spirit, touching the minds of people. On the other hand, sometimes we feel that we have failed, that we have not really done the job. And if we had done it better, some people would have had that aha experience. But that's not the case either. The Bible talks about the unveiled gospel and the veiled gospel. And when it's veiled, he reminds us, we preach Christ and him crucified. And if it's veiled, it's veiled to the minds of those who have already rejected him. And it's a result of the action of the God of this world, namely Satan. So, why does God come to us? Well, it's part of who he is. It's just the God who wants fellowship with people. He creates light for the world. He creates light for people. He comes to the whole world, and yet, as it said in John, the world didn't understand, didn't receive, didn't really get it. God is light, and God is closely associated with Christ. Someone said, do you want to know what God is like? Then get acquainted with Jesus. Christ is the likeness of God, it says in one translation. He is the light for the world. You probably remember the little gospel song for kids, this little gospel light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Well, little kids do actually give a very 
prominent and effective witness sometimes. I remember listening to two four-year-olds talking to each other about Jesus. And there was during the Lenten season, and one said to another, you know, Jesus died when he went to the cross. And the other one says, I know, but he came alive again. And I thought, boy, that's pretty solid. That's pretty basic. And these kids already grasped the meaning of that at four years old. And so the gospel light creates new life in us. As light was one of the first things that God gave to the world, it's one of the first things that God gives to his people, a spiritual light, a light which calls us out of darkness into a new relationship with God. He brings light out of darkness, order out of chaos, light out of the darkness of death, light from nothing for the world and for us. Since our bodies are the temple of God, we can share in that light and life, which is so characteristic of our God. He brings light to the world. He brings light to us. The world responds. We respond. And when that happens, things are in order as God intended. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, we know that we are called to know, love, and follow you. We also want to reach out and touch the world far and near with your help and light and understanding. O oh God, it is your will to shine the light of your presence on all your people and all you love. Enlighten your church and open the hearts of your people to listen to you and draw inspiration from Jesus. Let your creative love continue to, continue to bring life to every growing thing which stretches toward the sun. Restore your creation through your actions and the support of your people. God of all power, humble the hearts of leaders and quiet the pride of movements which can become destructive Teach those in authority how to rule for the good of all and let people everywhere learn to support each other. Be the strength of the sick and suffering, the lonely and forgotten. Shine the healing light of your presence on them and let their lives be guided by your spirit. We ask all this in the name of Jesus who has taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.